Woo! Oh my goodness gracious. Finally, a break from the rainstorms. It's been like this constant loop of rain, y'all. Sun shining now. I think we may have caught in a break from the lightning and thunderstorms, but I'm excited, so excited. So as you just saw in that previous clip, Dave had a surprise for me as he's coming up to meet me in Breckenridge. You know, I had a solo trip, 715 mile solo trip that I did. If you haven't seen any of those episodes, you should definitely go check them out. So this is the surprise, y'all. You know, from time to time, we tend to swap up things to see what it's like to live in other RVs or camper vans. Well, this is a luxury pop-up tiny camper van. Yes, we have never lived in a luxury pop-up tiny camper van before. So this is the perfect opportunity for us to do so. Now, this is a bit different than our camper van swaps. Why? Because Dave came up and surprised me in Breckenridge with the tiny pop-up camper van. So we have both rigs, but we're gonna be experiencing what it's like to live in this tiny camper camper van plus giving y'all a full tour of this tiny beast and I have to say I've already been in it and it's quite comfortable. Now we are no longer in Breckenridge. When I arrived to meet Tanya in Breckenridge we actually discovered a pretty significant water leak in desert snow so we had to get out of there. We drove down to Grand Junction to get the water leak fixed and fortunately it seems like we did get it fixed Then after that we left Grand Junction headed across Utah and we're now in Dixie National Forest. It's a beautiful forest here in Utah heading up to Cedar Break a national monument. Yeah and you know it's, it's actually because it's such a mixed bag with the rain and clouds and we're catching this break. It's supposed to be really beautiful up there. So we figured we go check that out, explore. Plus, I got some really fresh ingredients for supper. So exactly. you know that's going to be good. And fingers crossed, we're hoping tonight that the sky is going to open up and be clear because that's it's the right. peak for the Percy's meteor shower. So it could be really cool. That's right. It's amazing. And this particular spot we're heading to is a certified dark sky. So with clear skies, it should be with you. We just drove up from Duck Creek to Cedar Breaks National Monument. We're up about 10,000 feet now, and I gotta tell you, you really feel the elevation. Just that little difference makes a difference for us, for sure. And we're actually gonna take you out. Uh, they have what's called here is the South Rim Trail. And if you haven't been to Cedar Breaks, it's absolutely stunning. Can't wait to show it to you. But driving up here, you may have noticed, we went through some serious rain, hail, lightning storms. But up here, apparently, they have, they have not had rain all day, whereas down around Duck Creek, it's been raining off and on all day. And of course, that hail coming through was definitely unexpected. Main Street Donner's friendly ghosts waving us hello. Mountains high and valleys low. There's so much we don't know. Photographs and sepia capturing times we fly. All of story written in the blow up campfire. Oh my god. <laughs> Golden fields and desert sands. This departs that same. Canyon echoes, river bends, adventures that they bring from seaside cliffs. It is really serene up here. It's almost like this is paradise. Right. It feels like a different world versus Duck Creek. It does. Right? Completely it is, different. Yeah, this is like a hidden gem. I still feel like yeah, you don't really think about it as much as like you got Zion, you got Bryce, but this place is really special. It feels like yesterday we were just up here. It does. And it's just, it's magical. It's probably magical in the winter. Yes. And it's oh, just yeah. as beautiful now. I think the last time we were here, was there? Nope, there wasn't. I was gonna say, was there snow? <laughs> there was, uh, yeah, actually at one point we were up here and you could see snow in some of the deep ravines down below. Yeah. Right? Because we've come. may have been in June. Right, we've come multiple yeah, times. We though. have, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at those views. So if you're coming here and you want a beautiful hike, we definitely recommend giving the South Rim Trail a try. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's it's mostly, you know, it's, it's pretty flat with some kind of slight up and downs along the way. It's a really nice hike. We're gonna actually head on out to a, view, a viewpoint. It's about maybe a half mile to a mile in. From mountain peaks to ocean's tide Your laughter echoes my heart's pride Each mile marker our dreams reside Welcome to the tiny portion of the Cedar Breaks Lodge. This is called the History Mystery. It's super cool because the small structure that remains of the Cedar Breaks Lodge, which was constructed by the Utah Parks Company between 1924 and 1926. So you, a lot of it was removed, but this still remains. Look at Dave over there. See, this is a little, our little, uh, what do you call those? When you build those homesteads, a little homestead here. This is our homestead. We're going to build them right here. Right, we could build something like, how cool would this be? A little small homestead like this. Up 10,000 feet. <laughs> right. 
be buried in the snow. Right? Probably get buried in the snow in the winter. Wow, so we made a really nice distance in our hike. And right over there, I turned around to kind of soak in some of the beauty that's over to the left here, clear skies. But right over there, I saw a lightning strike. And the clouds are actually moving a little bit in, they're a little stale, but they're moving in a little ominous direction. It's been circling all morning, so I'm not sure. Maybe, just maybe, Dave thinks we can go a little more, but I'm thinking maybe it's time to get back and cook some food. I don't know, but maybe we'll just hike a little bit more, see what happens, and then we'll see. Well, listen, hey, we're 10,000 feet up. You do not want to get caught in a lightning storm up here, so we'll be pretty cautious. Maybe yeah. turn around. There's a new uh, new kind of observation point that just opened up. Maybe we check that out. Oh, that's Clo a good idea. Closer to the van. Yeah, maybe oh, do that. See, I like the way he thinks. Right? I like what you see? think. Yeah, I'm not a big lightning fan. <laughs> not at 10,000 feet. No. Not at any kind of feet, really. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> what are you doing? You just scared me. Trying to get you? Trying to get me? Oh yeah. Get you? you want to get me kind of jumping off that cliff back there? No. Right? No. She's trying to scare me on this cliff walk. No. It's crazy. No, I'm kidding. You? <laughs> you got me. I'll get you. You got I me. I'll get you. I wasn't sneaky enough in that corner. You but got I me. I will get you. Mark my words. We may have a badger down there. We see a marmot. Now they're not sure what it is, but good size and kind of hanging out. See kind of some markings on the face. If you guys know what it is, let us know in the comments below. Now, we knew they get a lot of snow here, but we didn't quite know how much snow. This will give you a sense. Yeah. So there's Tanya. That's me, right? You can see in 2002 and 2014, it was here as a low, but right? then you start going up. Yeah, uh-huh. The uh -huh. average, 85.6. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. And then going. way up there, uh -huh. way up there, you see 23 was 141 inches. And then 2005, the high 166 inches. Ooh, That's totally a lot of snow. Awesome. Grab the keys, pack the gear, dust the old RVs waiting here. Hit the road at morning light, chasing dreams till day meets night. Made it to the Point Supreme, right? It's like a year ago. It's funny because a year ago, this was. You couldn't get here. Right, it all, all kind of closed off. I think because right. they were probably building the new your visitor center. Right, the visitor center. Exactly, I think you're right about that. And actually, this is a pretty view, but I think the view we're at before, where it's a little bit more open, it's just, it's prettier. Yeah, I think that South Rim Trail to Spectra Point, highly recommend it. Yeah, I agree, pretty. And there she is, it's an amazing piece of building here. It's the new visitor center, Cedar Breaks National. Ooh, elevation. Ooh, catching my breath. Yeah. <laughs> but it's cool. So the visitor center's closed, but it's opening in a week. They have an outdoor fire pit. Look at that, Dave. Super yeah, neat. Cool. Ready to rock. I tell you, when you're like 10,300, 280 feet elevation, you really feel it. I certainly do feel it, but I must say, it is so beautiful up here. But all that little bit hiking has made me hungry. And I do know, you know, we know when there's bears around. You do know when there's bears around, right? Either signs will tell you, or there's garbage cans that block them all off. Like bear proof. So you know. Bring your bear spray, y'all. Bring your bear spray. So we found a nice spot here. So at the campground, actually, we were able to reserve a spot. We reserved a spot. We're not gonna be here all night because we gotta get back with the kitties late this evening. But for right now, we're gonna be here. This is where we're gonna cook. We could possibly have a fire because we have some wood. And this is gonna be amazing. Now, if we can keep this sky right here. Now, I was a little nervous because the clouds over in the distance, looked like they were coming this direction. But where we are now, they're right over there. It looks like they're moving away. So if they keep that up, then we might get a clear shot for some meteor showers tonight, y'all. And you know we're going to be bringing you in on that one. So, oh man, but this is absolutely beautiful. Dave is kind of parking. We're going to get things open up in the back. He's going to bring out the chairs. And I am going to get to cooking with this view. <sighs> Can y'all smell that fresh air? Just close your eyes and imagine pines, blue skies, mountain air. Just take a second to do that. There, look, there's Dave. Dave, breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. And stay hydrated, baby. Breathe in. Oh, and breathe out. One more time. Mm, you ready to eat? I'm freaking starving. So, we're going to kick off an appetizer right now. So, the, what I'm going to do is we're going to have some shishito peppers that we actually picked up from a place called Blaine's Farm in Clifton, Colorado. And it, we love shishito peppers. Dave is a big fan of them. So, I'm going to put them in the skillet. Now, normally I would make them with olive oil, but we don't have olive oil, y'all. So, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have some fun with this one. We're going to make them in a little bit of butter. And then, of course, we're going to season those with some nice salt. All right, so I'm gonna work with the utensils they gave me. I don't want a metal. They have a metal 
kind of salads, what do you call those, tongs. I don't want to put those in a, I just don't want to put those in this pot. That's a, what do you call this? <laughs> Why am I blanking? I don't want to put it in a pot that's, that's the altitude y'all's getting to me. I don't want to put it into a stainless pot because it scratched the surface or ruined this type, so. But I want to make sure I get these all nice and coated with butter and then I'm going to let them do their thing. While I do mine, soaking up this view and looking pretty while doing it. Well, Tanya cooks up the shishito peppers, and I gotta tell you, I can smell them. They smell amazing. I am super spoiled. She spoils me rotten. Super excited, but take a look at this campground here. We are up about 10,000 feet at Cedar Breaks. They have a nice campground up here, and absolutely beautiful. A lot of, you see a lot of, a lot of tenters, but also you see some Class A's too, and it's perfect for the Class B as well, but just a beautiful spot. So I figured before the main event. Oh yeah? Maybe we can enjoy some of these delicious shishito peppers. Yeah, yeah I smelled them. I, I mean, y'all, look. Smell amazing. That is sinfully delicious looking. Oh, man, they smell so good. Yeah. Diving in. Let's Diving do it. Diving in. Give it a shot. Have Pick you tried one. one yet? Nah, not since that raw one. <laughs> Pick one. I got one. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers, baby. Love you. Love you. Mmm. Oh, man. They're good. Mmm. They're really good. That's not bad. You get these from, though. And I didn't have the usual olive oil. Okay, so yeah, you put with butter it's on. It's just butter. Wow. They're good. Kind of tastes a little butter. Yeah, yeah. Buttery, but buttery good. Well, dine in. And I will never, up next. I will never complain about butter on things. So. Yeah. So butter good. makes everything better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to grab six ears of corn. Now, we got quite a few, but I'm not going to make all of them. We got like 10 ears. But tonight we'll have three each. One, two, three, four, five. And a sixy poo. And I will have Dave help me shuck those while I prep. The meat. Thanks for helping. Oh, uh, anytime. Right? This is like the best. I feel spoiled. Like yeah. when you get them from farms, oh, directly yeah. from the farm, I feel like this is like you're spoiled. Oh, I think these really are going to be really good. And they're, they're small ears. We, we know from sweet. We know from back home, you get small ears kind of early in the season. They tend to be really sweet, sugary. Oh, big time. You almost don't even need to have them with butter. No. Right? Or anything. So maybe just a little salt if you like it, but you know me. I mean, I'm. And I can't have corn without my butter. Right, a little butter it's almost sinful. It's almost like popcorn. I can't have my popcorn without my butter. Exactly. Oh man, I'm already starting to feel like the temperature's mm. dropping as the sun's starting to go yeah, down a bit. You know. I can feel the temperature going down. Burr. Yeah. It's gonna be cold tonight. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it might be a clear night. Fingers you just hope. Crossed. It's hard to know because you see storm. I see like big thunder clouds over there and then no. blue sky above us. So hopefully. No. Fingers crossed. You know, I'm just. No. I'm, I'm just... hoping. It's like one of those times where it's like. Like to peak. see the peak of the meteor shower last year, I just felt, I almost cried a little. It was so amazing. Right. Like I'd never in my life seen anything like it where they were just like zipping across the sky. And like there were even folks up there, remember where they had blankets and they're all snuggling. And oh, yeah, we got blankets. Like, yeah, we had blankets. We got blankets. And we have blankets this tonight too. Mm -hmm. And actually last year you got those amazing photos. We had the streaks yes. right in the sky, which was totally cool. Yes. Kudos to the gentlemen that show me how to really work the super slow shutter on my phone because those shots were from my phone. <laughs> right, amazing. So this is a great. Thank you. See, do I we'll help nice and fast. So I'll get those boiling up and then I'll, I'll, I'll boil that. Here. I'll get the meat going. All right, thanks, thanks. baby. Love ya. Love you. Cheddar sausage. It just feels like a cheddar sausage, corn on the cob, shishito peppers kind of night. We're out here in this beautiful, beautiful area, and I'm just gonna have to, it looks like I'm frying up some sausages, y'all. That's gonna be delicious. And just put that spicy mustard on it. Whoa. Thank you, baby. Nice cheddar sausage. I saw that mustard explosion yeah. from a distance. Yeah. 
<laughs> this thing just exploded all over me. Right, but because it's uh, not used to the elevation. Right, we put it in elevation. Exactly, but we it was only at eight thousand. <laughs> now it's at ten thousand three. So watch out. Watch out. Might now. explode on you. Here you go, babe. Have some mustard. Thank you. Spicy. I like the sound of that. Oh, look at that. It's because it's just there. Oh, there. I like the lines. There it goes. It's like, oh. That looks like a commercial. That's, that's so fancy. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Show me how it's done. Cue the metal music. Yeah. Oh. There you go. This is my straight line. Oh, it's funny. It's kind of like a small little opening on you. There you go. That's how it's done. <sighs> All right, bon appetit, baby. Bon appetit, my love. Oh, it's gonna have a nice crunch. Right. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That's all I gotta say about that. Very, very cheddary. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. I'm getting kind of cold. <laughs> it is getting cold out here. Oh, man. Make sure to put my sweatshirt on. The corn will be ready in a minute. I have that boiling right now, so I figure this will be first. Then we can. I love it. I got two plates here. <laughs> we can use these plates. Exactly. Use up the plates. Well, enjoy. Thanks, babe. Voila! Voila is right. Voila, voila. Ready? Should I open it up? Go for it. Let's do it. Ooh, holy. Nice. God. That looks awesome. Watch your napkin. Thank you, baby. I got the butter, I got the salt, all ready to rock. I forgot the tongs, but. That's all right. We can kind of dive in and see how we do. Pick pick your poison. Ooh. Hot. Hot. Ooh. But it's good hot. Hot, hot. Ooh, hot, Ooh, hot. shake the water off. Shake it off. Shake the water off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Get some butter on there. Roll it in the butter. Mm, smells good. A little bit of salt. I'll leave it on mine. You can roll it on my plate. Oh, I like it. I don't mind you getting messy with Community me, butter. Community butter. There you go. It comes pre-rolled. A little salt. I'm going to wait for you because it's all about that bite. And a little bit of this. All right, let's do it. All right. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Oh, my God. This is so good. That is corn. This oh is my a, gosh. You just, you just did the perfect corn. This is mm. amazing. Like it melts in your mouth. You know, the best way to do mm. that is boil it. And as soon as it starts boiling, your salty water, you turn it off. That's yeah, it. You, you bring it, it to a boil and it's like it to a boil. turn off. And then you just put your butter and salt. It's so sweet when this it melts so in your mouth, good. right? Oh. This is really good corn. Mm. I love doing this. I'm so happy that we're back together. Right? Again. Oh my God. So right? exciting. Forever. Forever and ever. So we actually took the, went to bed, took the day off because we had to catch up on some work. As a matter of fact, uh, we had just dropped a new episode today, but if you haven't seen the two episodes I put together for my solo road trip, well, you should definitely check that out. It is definitely a crisp, cool night tonight. I'm feeling like Dave is up to something. What are you up to, Dave? <laughs> Oh, uh, fire, of course. Of course, yeah. fire time. Can I start outside to light the candle? Let's do it. I'll light it up. There you go, baby. Mm. Cheers. Ooh, sprayed on me a little bit. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, baby. Uh, there is something about mountain air, the smell of pine, wood, fire, and a nice cold beer. Right? And this yeah. is actually a local Las Vegas brewery. Oh, cool. Right? Called the uh, Big Dogs Brewing Company. Oh, cool. Out of Vegas. Peace, love, and hoppiness. Out of Vegas. Uh, yeah, and nice. actually, and this is courtesy, got a shout out to Blacksford Luxury RV Rentals. Oh, which, shout out to Blacksford. Yes. Thank you, Y'all, seriously, we use Blacksford's actually when Desert Snow was in repair and we wanted to get to the Eclipse Fest, so Blacksford hooked us up with the view that you guys saw in some episodes a while back and it was super awesome as a matter of fact they're the ones yes. that hooked up dave that's why we have this luxury pop-up camper van to show you guys and, and to live in so yeah so they're Thank awesome you. they actually are right out of vegas and they have a couple different options they even have an echo they have yeah. a solace a revel and i believe they even have well of course they have the views exactly which yeah. is super cool yeah. so cheers to blacksburg right. thank, you. thank you all mm. That is good. Now, unfortunately, Blacksford Luxury RV Rentals does not allow pets in their vehicles, which is okay with us because we have desert snow right here. So Brady and Bailey are looking at us right at that window while we have a beer. Exactly <laughs> and they want. can stay close to us. Hey, guys. Cheers. <laughs>
<laughs> and speaking of come to surprise you in the camper van, mm. I gotta say this, I had no idea you know, what you were going through and mm -hmm. your whole ad adventure, your solo adventure. So I was super impressed watching the two videos you out there. I mean, you killed it. Huh. So I gotta give you cheers. Thanks, and guys, babe. head over there, give Tanya a big thumbs up for those two videos because she killed it. Thanks y'all. Show us some, sure some love. Yes. Be kissy boo. All right. Love you baby. Love you. Peace and love. That's and right. happiness. Plenty of happiness. <laughs> Now, it looks like it's going to be a clear sky tonight, babe. It does. <laughs> I don't see any clouds up there, unlike last night. Oh, my gosh. Right? It was like trying to find the needle in the haystack up there, and all of a sudden, the clouds are rolling in, and they're surrounded by the lightning strike. I know. I mean, I'm going to throw a couple pictures up here if I can. It might not do it justice, but this is how beautiful the sky was, even though it was cloudy, and we saw some shooting no, stars. No, we saw some amazing shooting meteors. stars. Meteors. Exactly. Chris's meteor exactly. shower. Little, little specks. <laughs> specs of like meteors but it was amazing i mean yeah. some of those ones were huge and you kind of had to take what you can get like you said with the clouds come by oh, yeah. but the lightning show was pretty impressive too. oh so. man and it was so cool because we were like i felt like we we're gods because we were above the clouds gods. like we're above the we're above the light zeus zeus I just but it was such a beautiful night yeah crisp cool and i was really shocked at them telling us that there was the rangers up there said they didn't have any rain whatsoever it was all below i know because down here it was like raining like crazy oh yeah right and then up there nothing nothing at all but it was beautiful it was <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> Cut. That's the happiness. <laughs> Cut. I got the feeling, baby, that I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you had a little. I thought you get excited for some pop up action. I wa <laughs> That could be taken in many ways, my dear boy. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It sounds like a drinking game to me. <laughs> <laughs> a long road trip. <laughs> I am up here in the upper part of the uh, camper, in the pop-up part. Dave's putting the window dressings on down below. I would show you, but he's kind of in his underwear. <laughs> no, no. Yes. He's going to get the movie. We're going to have movie net up here. I think it's time to tune in. I think after that beer, that nice cozy fire and good conversation with my husband, I think it's going to be a cozy, cozy night. Oh, come on up, big boy. Coming up. Come on up and get cozy. Moving in the pop-up. Moving night in the pop-up, pop baby. Now, we've been in a pop-up uh, truck camper, but first time in one of these. Oh, yeah, why? You definitely need to watch oh. your head. Oh. <laughs> oh, stay low. Stay low. Keep it low. Stay low. <laughs> Keep it low. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What are you doing? What's going on over there? Why are you breathing into the pillow? We have a leak of methane gas up here. <laughs> the methane gas leak. Uh, but, I mean, come on. It's not as bad as yours. No, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> the window's open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Good night, babe. Good night, baby. Good night, baby. Love you.
missed you last night. We missed you last night. coffee wow i don't have to make coffee on my own anymore it's back to being spoiled by you i miss making you coffee i miss you making me coffee right. oh my gosh I better sit up oh yeah i tell you that's pretty high hold on, hold on. <laughs> wow Ugh. there you go baby mm -mm -mm. i had to sleep i slept well i actually have to say it's pretty cozy the only the only thing is I had a lot of water <laughs> You had a lot of bathroom runs for a us a lot of bathroom runs i was climbing over you like like a wild pet <laughs> Mmm, that's awesome. Thank you for the coffee. It is such a crispy, cool morning. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. You yeah. know, it's funny. I, we started off up top, and that is definitely more designed for kiddos, not for right. a Tanya or a Dave, because having to come down. It's a, it's a pretty <clears throat> steep ladder. Yeah. Pretty steep ladder. You know, several times a night was like, nah. So I just, we just rolled right into that downstairs bed, and I was cozy for the rest of the night. Oh, yeah, it was really nice. I mean, it's funny. It's great there's like, you have two basically queen size beds in this thing and so it's great for families mm. you know we put the heat on it works yeah. just perfectly i mean you have to use the heat it's yes. awesome you know with all the all the bells and whistles this little little guy has to offer i feel like we should probably finish our coffee and then give everybody the grand tour i know it's what y'all been waiting for time for us to give them the grand tour but first coffee coffee time mm. just mm. you just me and the mm. endless country All right, so let's see if Tanya is ready to give the tour. Tanya, knock, knock, you ready for the tour? I think I am ready. Come on, I had not actually say come in. How do you know if I'm ready? I just I came been, crashing I could have been naked. Oh, that like, would have been tough. Of, what kind of stuff is that? I, now, I knew she wasn't naked, guys. Okay, come on. Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he did not. It's, no, but anyway, <laughs> I think I am ready. I have my nice, delicious, I had my coffee. Now I have my tea. And I think it's a great time to come on in and show you this lovely vehicle of ours that we call Tiny Home on Wheels. Luxury. Come on in. So before we work our way to one of the coolest parts of this 21-foot Winnebago Solus, I have to kind of show you. This is the front area. I love when these captain seats both turn around. If you notice right behind me, this is the new car play. It's one of something I wish we had in Desert Snow. We have the older model, but this is the newer model. Bigger screen, definitely like that. And, and very comfortable seating here. I will say, I'm sitting here at sort of this dinette table, which does have a swivel and two captains, not two captains, two seats right here, which remind me very much of Desert Snow. I'm not a big fan of those seats. As y'all know, I've mentioned this in many, many of our reviews because I feel if you're going to be in this as much as we are in Desert Snow and out on the road, I feel having a little bit more of a dinette area more comfortable would suit the bill a little bit better. But hey, this is really kind of comfortable here it does have one big nice piece of storage here and i'll open that not much in it but it got some chips got a bowl and got some oranges sounds like a party to me honey ah well i'm basking here in the sun from what's it's a window but it feels like a skylight with sun just reflecting off my red hues of my shirt and everything else now this here it has a little bit of extra storage which is nice this is where we kind of keep the window dressings but when the window dressings are up it has a lot of extra space that kind of goes back here so it's nice you know when you're in a small rv such as this space is a premium so any nook and cranny that has options like this is like gold so before we work our way on back i have to say when you're up 8500 feet in elevation it's been really crisp cool air loving it and it actually gives me the opportunity to bust out my <clears throat> grogu socks because y'all know tanya's inner child is groko <laughs> <laughs> so right here we have a Nova Cool refrigerator. It's a small refrigerator. It's great for one person. It's great for two people if you don't eat. We like to eat and I like to cook. So I definitely like the options that we have over in Desert Snow, having the exterior kitchen as well as that great size kitchen and freeze that we have there. But it's a decent size refrigerator and it has a little freezer so you can put your ice cream or things in that as well. And what I like about it too is its access point to being outside. You know, it's one of those things when you're in here, you want to really enjoy the outdoors. You don't have to always 
walk through your interior of your rig here to get something when well, you could actually get it right from here and out it just makes it convenient a lot of vans have that it just makes it super convenient to have access to that so you're not trucking in whatever muddy shoes or whatever it is that yeah i'm blabbing let's move on <laughs> <laughs> say one thing really quick dave is actually opening up the top to bring some more light in here as we work our way back it gets all dark in here especially we're trying to show you all the good stuff but i really enjoy having a rear view camera mirror so there's a camera out in the back and we'll show you that later, but the rear view mirror is the actual camera. You know, like in Desert Snow, we don't have that. We use and depending on the blind detectors, blind spot detectors, as well as our big mirrors on both sides. But that's a really cool feature to have. And we may have to install one of those. <clears throat> In Desert Snow, just saying. One of the cool features I absolutely enjoy in this van space too is having this massive screen, which is part of the sliding door. So when I'm cooking, that fresh air is coming in here. I can enjoy whatever scenery I'm looking at, which is nice. I definitely think in Desert Snow we have a window, but it doesn't really do the trick, which is why I like to do a lot of cooking outside. But in the winter months, things like that, this just makes it really appealing to bring that fresh air in, that spring, fall, summer, whatever vibe you choose when you're cooking. And that brings me to the next piece over here. Oh, and be sure to stick around because Dave is going to give y'all a really fun tour of the outside and some fun facts you probably want to know about something this small. I am such a big fan of herbal eucalyptus and mint tea. It's just that smell and that feeling all at once just makes you feel good inside. So this actually has a dual burner propane and I've used it quite a few times already. Very easy and convenient, same as ours, but we don't really use ours as often. I have an induction cooktop, which I use on a very frequent basis, or I'm cooking outside over some hot coals or the fire, but it's got a new nice dual propane burner. And it does also have this cutting board here. Uh, and I don't know who's cutting this low, unless you're like five feet and you know, four feet or three feet tall. Cause that's, I'm like chopping. It's like, I gotta get down here to chop now. But it's a convenient thing to have in case you need that extra space for cutting as well. Now I see you eyeing my delicious tomatoes over here on my counter, but those are for us later. I would offer you some if you're here, but you're not here. Those are my tomatoes. Back on. <laughs> well, it has a decent amount of counter space, as you can see here as well, too. If you're not using the propane burner, it's just an extension to the counter, which is great. Some actually have extensions in the corner over here, but this is a decent counter space. It also has a sink, a very similar sink to Desert Snow. It's probably the exact same sink as Desert Snow as well, except this one has more of a, a gooseneck faucet than ours is more of a, a straight lace, if you call it. But it's got a little storage container under here. And of course, there's a nice storage space up here. This reminds me very much of the one that we have on Desert snow as well it's magnet i'm not a big fan of the magnet locks but you know what it does have strong magnets to be able to latch so you can get to your pots and pans and these are compliments providing uh blackford so thank y'all blackfords for giving us all the good stuff so we don't have to go get it and yeah and then of course more storage under here as you can see there's drawer space here more drawer space under here where we keep the trash and bags and then an additional pot and pan. So that's your kitchen area. And in such a small space, I feel it does the trick. It feels bigger than you think when you're in here. And that was surprising to me. I think it all has to do with the layout that goes on in these sort of uh, class B style camper vans. So I really do like the counter space in here. I was able to get my groove on cooking the other night and uh, works well for us. So just so you know, we have been living in this thing for a little bit. So it is lived in, but it is clean. It's clean, but it's lived in. Step behind me over here. This is door number two. This is your bathroom. Now this is a wet bath, y'all. I mean, it's tight. It is definitely small. I'm gonna have to have Dave in a little bit of clip. I'm gonna show y'all step in here to see how it is. Now this bar would have to come out in order to shower, but it's one you can hang dry your clothes. It does come out, which we'll show you. Boom, boom. Like so, very easy. Whoa, whoa. But it is a wet bath. It's got all the features of a wet bath, except it's a decent size wet bath here. It's got the Thetford toilet system. System, which is also the same toilet system that we have which is a cassette it's got your shower hot and control knobs but it doesn't have the same type as we do we have an oxygenics head this is a very basic one that you find in your traditional apartment <laughs> and of course back over in this direction come on over here you got your toilet paper closet wrapped right up right up in here your shower curtain because you're gonna lay over a shower curtain which snaps right in on this direction and it's just it's basically your small wet bath mm -mm. <laughs> Taco neck. Yeah. <laughs> Dave's got taco neck. I could do that. If y'all don't know what taco neck is, it looks like this. When you kind of have to get something, when you take a bite of a taco, usually you don't eat it like this. Usually you turn your head I think the way and you bite it. the taco. Oh, oh this is see? the way to do it. It's a sit down shower. See? You could do it all at once if you have to do the business this and is that. This like in Japan. True. <laughs> 
welcome to our bedroom area here you guys it's actually a pretty comfortable bed i must say on a little platform that you have here and we're going to show you the uh convertible feature of this in just a bit but it's nice it's a like a queen size feels very queen like dave can actually sleep in it he's six two and a half he can sleep in it his feet actually don't you know smushy smushy so much but hey it's got great ventilation too so if you know we have those hiking days you know sometimes those feet can give a little whoopie doo just open up the windows and it just sucks it right out it's nice, it's nice to have that now but we do have some pretty nice size storage bins over here we still just got some miniature things in here right now okay and then same thing i have some extra sheets it's another another storage uh, bin over here for sheets things like that or whatever your use may be and then of course if you look up right above you that is the ac unit it's a coleman mac ac and it's controlled by the unit itself where ours actually has a control panel for it as well and so dave can probably tell you a little bit more about that because we've been up in the mountains so didn't have to use ac but he could tell you exactly what that's all about in just a bit but i do like and you, know, you saw as we kind of walk through here it has also that nice open back which has that screen that we can zip down and then just keep it open so you're still connected with all the elements uh, from outside and in without bringing in all the elements from outside in like those mosquitoes and those flies you know what i'm saying but it's a very very comfortable setup back here and it feels again even more spacious than you think when you're inside of this thing it just feels like it can go on and on and on and on oh, oh don't fall and on and on and on and on and by the time you finish you have 10,000 steps in <laughs> so how do you monitor your water levels in here well there's an actual light switch here and it kind of shows the level of your water system right here so when it's full it's up it's up there and of course you can see we're about halfway through right now which is a really nice feature to be able to monitor your water systems without having all that technical glitch of those sensors <laughs> And just so you're aware, the capacity for both the fresh water and the gray water are both 20 gallons. So you have a 20 gallon fresh tank and a 20 gallon gray tank. Now, speaking of monitoring systems, well here you also have a Truma system. So this controls your heat and hot water, very similar to our system as well. Over here you have the Winnebago control panel. So you have your liquid propane controls, which shows that it's two thirds full, your battery, which is showing it's full, and your gray tank, which is showing empty. But it's also your control panel for your water pump. It's showing that the water pump is on. So I am going to turn that off. We also have your liquid propane, which we're making stuff this morning and it's on. So I'm going to turn that off. And of course you have your Xantrax solar charger controller panel here and you have your holding tank heater. Turn off when it's not in use. Boom, boom, boom. That's from your holding tank. All right, well, that is the systems. Very amazing, very simplistic use and very comfortable as you can see inside this luxury tiny pop-up camper van. But that's not it. I have something really special. Two more things I need to show you, but I gotta get ready first. Give me a second. So now that that we put the bed up or Dave put the bed up here this is actually really awesome you guys to have this extra storage of your bikes or whatever things you brought to camp with you have all this here but what's really cool is you got extra storage there's storage under these panels under here there's storage under here there is storage I'll just show you this side to give you one little look of it oh and they're heavy but there you have your looks like you have your electron electrics your water hose things like that there is deep closet storage in here as well they have the mesh net storage here which you can store things in and, and one on the bottom here and and then another drawer as well that you can use but right now they look like they have medical equipment and actually your gloves and your uh, septic system cleansers but it's great when it's up this is what it's like it's a really really dynamic space you know all in one 21 foot luxury pop-up camper van now i saved the best for last i'll meet you over here in a second see you in a second i know you're wondering where i am all you have to do is follow the ladder Go up the ladder, but be very careful. It's really small, almost designed for kids. Hey, y'all, hey, welcome to our pop top. Now this, I'm already nice and snuggly cozy up in here. Make sure my shirt doesn't come up because y'all don't need to see them cookies. But this is very cozy up here, you guys, as you can see. It's definitely designed more for the kiddos, not designed for Tanya and Dave, but definitely designed for the kiddos or any extra guests you may have up here. It's a full-size mattress. What I like about this mattress, I'm gonna roll it back so you can kind of see, is it does have, I forget the name of these things here, but it does have this, which allows for proper ventilation so that when you're sweaty and moisturous bodies are laying on it, it gives it a place to not 
collect all that moisture to cause mold. I like it, I like it a lot. And then of course, there's three windows up here. Two actually have screens. The big one that was letting in all that sunlight earlier you saw, as well as the one over to our left. This one is more of a weatherproof type screen. I will tell you this, if you're asking that question, I hear some of you asking, how does it feel up here in the wintertime? Does it get really cold up here? Well, when we had the heat on and we were up here, heat rises. So it did stay toasty warm. The biggest problem for us was because of all that water, we had to use the bathroom a lot. So going up and down that ladder was not an option. I was done after the second run. So I stayed downstairs, but it's got a little ventilation system up here as well. And if you look over to the right, you do have your light switch. Yes, there is a light that actually gives you an ample amount of light that you'll see right behind Dave in just a second. And then of course you have the USB ports, two USB ports and a DC outlet. Boom, boom, boom. Nice, very comfortable, very cozy. And that's it, y'all. That is it. That is super comfortable. I'm going to roll back. I might uh, have to take 20 minutes to get down off that ladder. So you don't have to go home, but you got to get outside because Dave's waiting for you on a lovely tour of the outside. See you guys. Thanks, babe. And one thing we actually didn't mention when we were inside, and that's actually is the height of the interior. And you can see it's actually only about 6'3 inside, where in the Echo, it's 6'8. So that makes a big difference, especially for folks that are tall, like both Tanya and myself. I mean, I'm just over 6'2, and so I just scrape the top of that. And you go into the shower, too, it's even lower. But anyway, now that we're outside, let's talk about the chassis. And of course, it is a Dodge Ram ProMaster chassis. 280 horsepower, it's a 3.6 liter, six cylinder, V6 cylinder engine and the gas tank actually holds 20 gallons. One really good thing, we have had just an incredible opportunity to drive this for many miles. I took this out of Vegas all the way to Breckenridge, and then Tanya drove this down from Breckenridge all the way back here in Dixie National Forest. So yeah, oh, and it was quite easy. I have to say, I was pleased with it, except a couple things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it drives really well. And of course, it's, as Tanya mentioned, it's 21 feet. When you're fitting into a, a true Class B, it's very maneuverable. I mean, if you're trying to turn or something like that, it has a very nice tight turn turning radius. Now I will say going uphill, we took this, I took this up 9,600 feet. When we were going up, it's loud, right? The engine does work you know, harder, it seems, than say our Winnebago Echo, which has that Ford EcoBoost engine. But all in all, it drives very nicely. And this also comes with something we are very familiar with. And of course, that is a cassette toilet. Now the cassette itself is about a five gallon capacity and we've gotten very used to it. Yeah, you know, we do have to dump it on a regular basis, but the nice thing about it is you can dump this in so many different places along the road, like from rest stops and things like that. And so it is very convenient that way. I know some folks probably love and swear by having that big regular toilet with the, with the uh, big black tank. That's not how we roll. We roll with the cassette toilet. And underneath you have a 2800 watt Onan generator which is super important in this case in particular because there's actually no inverter in the rig. And so when you run the AC, to run the AC, you actually have to have be plugged in to, to a 30 amp outlet or have the generator on. And so when I was driving from Vegas, I was gonna be doing a lot of boondocking, staying at Harvest House, and it was hot. It was you know hitting 100 degrees during that early part of the drive. And so I was a little worried about how comfortable I would be inside sleeping. And uh, fortunately, I could run the generator all night and on a full tank, it's a gas generator kind of going to the gas engine up front. And you can actually run the generator for about 30 hours on a full load until you actually get to that quarter tank cutoff. They'll cut it off for safety reasons before you actually go refill your gas tank. And I do want to just say one more thing about sleeping in here, especially in high heat. I was worried about that, as I said, and it was very, very comfortable. The AC with the generator running kept this very nice and cool, and it wasn't overly loud or just kind of overly intrusive. Even though it is above your head, I had a very comfortable sleep in here as I drove across to, towards Breckenridge. Let's take a uh, shower outside. Yeah. Right? You have a little handy little setup here. You can kind of set up. And then right here, hook it up, take a nice little shower. Nice. Now there's no, no head restrictions here. I can kind of get nice and high. You can spread your right? wings. I can splash water everywhere. <laughs> Not everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> now I'm gonna talk about one more important feature about this camper van, but I'll meet you on the other side. And up on top of the pop-up, you have 220 watts of solar power, which I gotta say does a really good job of keeping your house battery charged, especially in those situations where you're parked for quite a while, you get a lot of sun. Just one more thing to mention in the Dodge ProMaster is that it is a two-wheel drive vehicle you know, as compared to our Winnebago Echo, which is all-wheel drive. And so if you're driving in a lot of ice and snowy conditions, you know, in our, in our case, we would be very cautious in this, whereas we do a lot of winter camping in the Echo. And so the Echo for us makes a lot of sense in those 
wintry, icy conditions. Well, that about does it for us, right, babe? Yeah, no, yes, it does. I gotta say, we had a lot of fun trying to pop up for the first time. I know. Big shout out to Blacksford for hooking up my baby to surprise his baby <laughs> yeah. with this baby. Anyway, if you can, consider joining us over on Patreon. It's an amazing growing group over there. We actually post videos that you won't see here, behind the scenes content, raw footage. We actually have a couple episodes that we posted over there. So if you can join us, we'd love to have you, right? Absolutely. It's a great group. So please come out over. We'd love to see you. Yeah. And on that note, y'all, it is time. After that RV tour, I feel I am so hungry. Oh, I am hungry. All right. So we should take the bikes out and maybe head into town. I think so. It's a beautiful day for it. See y'all on the next one.